Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you for attending today's STN monthly webinar. The learning objectives today are discuss the goals and philosophy of the STN Government Affairs Committee, describe the role and re responsibility of the Government Affairs Committee, and describe a brief overview of the toolkit and resources available from the Government Affairs Committee. As you can see, there's no conflict of interest from today's presenter. The Society of Trauma Nurses is accredited as a provider of continuing nursing education by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation. This event has been awarded 1.0 contact hours, and the enduring materials for the on-demand webinar will expire on June 31, 2017. To successfully complete this course, participants must attend the entire event and complete submit the evaluation at the end of the session. Students viewing the on-demand lesson must also complete a post-test evaluation and pass with a minimum of 75%. This session is being recorded so that, it, so that it can be offered as on-demand CE for our members. Your lines are muted, but if you have any questions, please type them into the question queue and we'll address them at the end of the presentation, time permitting. Um, we hope that you gain great value from today's educational session. Our speaker today is Adam Haley, a graduate of the University of Louisville with a Bachelor of Science in Law and Public po Policy. He has served as a legislative intern with the Kentucky General Assembly before going on to organize volunteers at the grassroots level with a campaign to re-elect the U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and as a field director on the 2015 Kentucky Governor's Race. As a government affairs professional and registered lobbyist, Adam now collaborates and consults with a variety of partners on the state and federal level on public policy and regulatory affairs. Please welcome today's presenter, Mr. Adam Haley. Thanks and good afternoon to everyone. Um, just want to take a second to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to attend this webinar. Um, you know, as much as like we, we like to pretend in politics that everything we deal with is life and death, most of you actually do, and, uh, and we appreciate that you're here today to learn a little bit more about what I do. So today's presentations can be divided into three sections. We're going to talk about developing an advocacy strategy, advocacy and meeting tips, and then we'll end with a Q&A session. So... Of course, uh, when it comes to developing an advocacy strategy, the first question you should ask is why. Um, it's always better to be proactive rather than reactive. Um, certainly, if you have an issue that's important to you, it's, it's a good idea to get out there and go after it yourself as opposed to waiting until it creeps up and someone else has had their say. Of course, when the situation dictates that it's time to be reactive, uh, it's always advantageous to have these established relationships with policymakers. You don't want the first time you meet with a legislator or policymaker to be when you're asking them for something. And finally, the most important reason is because you're the expert. Um, you know, most of these folks have backgrounds in law or other professions, and they may not be familiar with nursing and healthcare, and they really do rely on your expertise uh, when you come to visit them and when you come to testify on issues that they're dealing with. Um, another reason would be because you all have asked for it. Our STN Government Affairs Committee circulated a survey in late 2015 to establish the priorities that the committee would uh, approach. And those three priorities, the top three were trauma center funding, mental health care and substance abuse treatment, and public safety and injury prevention. So where do we start? Uh, you have an issue. Uh, we'll take, for example, public safety and injury prevention. Uh, where do we go from there? So the first step is going to be creating a coalition. Uh, you want to gather all the interested parties beforehand. So doctors, hospital associations, other medical professionals that may have skin in the game. We want to get those folks together and talk to them about the issue and try to come to a consensus. Okay. Uh, and don't assume that an organization or a group of professionals may be on board. It, it may seem like a no-brainer to you, but they may have conflicts. They may have issues that they want to resolve. So it's important to get that out in the open first before it comes up later in the process and come to one unified message 
the more of these organizations and associations you can get together, you can build that unified message and deliver it to the policymakers. Um, so as part of that process, you want to identify key stakeholders in your state early on, uh, NGOs, other nonprofit associations and think tanks have a hand in developing policy for legislators. Uh, business leaders, the heads of your hospitals, the heads of practices, non-elected party officials, you will want to meet with those folks and get engaged. The media, um, driving the media message early on is going to be key. And then grassroots, this is where we come in. You want to deal uh, specifically with individual members that can contact their legislators um, that they're the constituent of. Uh, they listen to those folks, and having good, strong grassroots support can trump even the most coordinated campaign from a large, large organization that lacks that kind of support. Developing media contacts is going to be important because you want to drive the narrative early on, okay? Get out there, get your press releases together, and assign one media point of contact or spokesperson, and make sure that you stay on message, okay? Be prepared to adapt to changes rapidly. You may have organizations that are support your issue or are neutral on your issue to start with, but may develop an opposing position later, and it's important to be ready for those changes um, and have someone that is that one central point of contact that they can relay information through. So next, uh, you have a uh, you have an issue, and you need to know where do you take the issue. Um, some issues are legislative, so you may need a new law passed, or you may need an amendment to a previously written law. Um, so you're going to take the legislative route. Uh, the legislators are aided by stakeholders outside of the legisl legislator, um, such as organizations like STN, other uh, nonprofit groups, and legislative aides within their own uh, within their own branch. Regulatory uh, focuses on the executive side. So for regulatory issues, uh, these are laws that have already been written. The legislation is generally written vaguely to allow flexibility when it's implemented and certain issues you may take through the executive cabinet. Today, we're going to focus primarily on the legislative side. Uh, so this, for folks who may not be familiar, is the process how a bill would become law. And we'll use the federal level as an, the primary example. Uh, some states, there's a little bit different process, but it generally all kind of follows this flow. A member um, is going to introduce a piece of legislation, uh, something they care about, something a group has brought to them. That legislation is then referred to the committee of jurisdiction, that committee uh, assigned to handle those particular legislative issues. The committee would then vote on the legislation, and they send that bill to the House or Senate floor, depending on which side of the uh, Congress it has started on. In the House, the legislation is committed, uh, considered by the Rules Committee, and if it adopts the rule, it amends and passes the bill. Then the Senate can pass the bill. The House and Senate then have to agree on their two bills. Uh, if they're the same, then they simply pass them as written. If there are differences, they have a conference report that gets written. Uh, that takes both uh, parts of the legislation and combines them together into one piece. Um, then it goes back to the respective chambers. The House will pass their conference report. The Senate passes their conference report. And it's on to the president. And once the president has the final piece of legislation, um, they have the option to sign or not sign it or veto the legislation. Uh, and like I said, this is for the federal level. But on a state level, it's, it's often a similar process. You'll have your legislative and executive branches working together um, on legislation the whole whole way through. Eventually, your executive signs it. However, each state is unique. Um, 49 of 50 states have a bicameral legislature. Um, so they'll have 
typically a House of Representatives and a Senate. Uh, Nebraska, being the sole exception, has a unicameral or one house nonpartisan legislature. So when it comes to knowing how that works, uh, it's often useful to refer to third party resources, um, so, such as the National Conference of State Legislatures or NCSL um, for that information. Uh, you can also uh, look to your state legislature's uh, support organization. So, uh, for example, here in Kentucky, it's the Legislative Research Commission, and, and most state legislators have some kind of similar support organization. So again, we're talking about the committees of uh, jurisdiction. You, you have your bill, it's been introduced, and you need to identify where it's going to after that. Um, that way you can identify the legislatures that you need to contact. Um, for example, funding issues may end up in a appropriations committee uh, or in the process of writing a budget for your state. Uh, injury prevention would often end up in health and welfare. Uh, substance abuse, uh, you could see that come up in public safety or health, but it's important to keep an eye on the process because it, it could come up in a completely different committee than you would expect. Once you've identified this committee, um, it's important to find and contact your legislators. And identifying your association's members, legislators, is key. Early on, you want to be able to when you need to target and talk to a particular legislator, it's key to have members in their district, their constituents that you can reach out, reach out to and have them contacted. Because as you'll see in the chart that is on screen, we have a discussion, um, and this is a survey put out to uh, members of Congress talking about how important and how helpful messages are from constituents. Um, you can see if the constituent contacts them and they have specific information about the impact the bill is going to have on their district or their state, 31% of members of Congress say that's very helpful. Um, if you, you can go on a more personal level, the constituents' reasons for supporting or opposing the bill or issue or a personal story, those are helpful, but certainly on the whole, concrete data, uh, concrete information is going to be uh, most key, and especially when it comes from a constituent. As you'll see on the next screen, if the member or senator has not already arrived at a decision on the legislation, how much influence might the following advocacy strategies directed to their office have on their decision? So just the same on the federal level as it is on the state level, in-person visits from their constituents are going to have the greatest effect. As you can see, 46% would say a lot of positive influence comes from an in-person visit from a constituent. They're the people that vote for them. They're the reason they have the job, and they're the people they're there to represent. So hearing from, from them in person is going to have the biggest impact. Um, contact from a constituent who represents other constituents and can, can show support for the issue uh, is going to be important. Um, and then you see as it goes down, it, it goes from individual letters, individual uh, emails and phone calls um, to visits from lobbyists like myself or uh, form letters. Um, certainly, any contact is good. And if you can generate a lot of contact, it's going to help. But the that really personal contact and the contact from their constituents specifically is what's going to drive the point home. So say you do get the opportunity to conduct a legislative visit, uh, where do you go from there? Uh, and what's most important is getting face time with the legislators. Um, if you can get in and you can get a meeting with them specifically, great, uh, because you're going to get your message directly into their ear. Develop the relationships with these legislators beforehand, though. Um, if you can meet them before you've got an issue to bring in front of them, that's all the better because they know you, they know your experience, and you don't want the first time you meet a legislator to be when you're asking them for something. But if you can't get face time with the specific legislator, get to know their staffers too. Um, as I said before, 
you all are experts on healthcare and trauma nursing, um, and often legislators aren't, uh, but their staffers, their staffers typically are. They'll have they'll hire people that are policy experts in certain areas and assign them topics of responsibility, and they're their most trusted advisors. They take their information um, very very dearly and. If you can get in there, get in there, and get them to take your issue seriously, you stand a good chance of be, being represented well to the legislator. But have some certain expectations about these meetings. Um, hurry up and wait is something we hear a lot, and you need to make sure that your schedule is flexible. Um, you may have to make adjustments at the last minute, and be prepared to walk and talk with them. I've taken meetings in hallways. Um, one time, I think it may have actually been a closet. Um, these meetings will change all the way up until a morning, the morning of, um, sometimes even right before the meeting. Uh, I've had organizations that we've put together uh, legislative visits for that I was fielding phone calls for meetings later in the afternoon as I was walking into meetings in the morning. Um, and again, you may meet with staffers and not the legislator, but don't be deterred because those folks are really um, – the policy experts, the folks the legislator is going to listen to the most in their office. So we have a case study of a specific example in New York. Uh, in New York, medical, exam medical examiner practice is governed by each county, and communication with trauma centers was variable and not explicitly regulated. Trauma centers in our region were not receiving reports from MEs, leaving gaps in injury reporting and mortality review practice. Meeting with local MEs did not yield commitment or change in reporting. So trauma leadership formed a coalition and met regionally with lo uh, and locally with state legislators advocating for change in public health law to mandate ME report availability to trauma centers. From there, the New York State Assembly introduced and passed amendments to the public health law to mandate distribution of ME reports to trauma centers. And the outcome there was 92% of all ME reports requested in 2015 were returned to the index case trauma center. So as you can see, it, sometimes one very specific drill down issue, you can move from that and affect a big change going forward. So now we're on to advocacy and meeting tips. Uh, these are going to be more specific to meetings, um, but generally the process by which you're going to get to know your legislators and make your voice heard. When you have your meetings with legislators, uh, practice your message. Practice it early, often, and right before the meeting, because you don't want to read from talking points, but instead be familiar with the material you're covering. It's going to make you appear confident and more natural. Don't be afraid to defer. Um, if you're asked a question you don't know the answer to, don't make up an answer. Um, commit to finding out the answer and deliver later. Um, never mislead a legislator, either accidentally or intentionally, because once you've lost their trust, there's little chance you'll regain it. Um, if the legislator has objections to your issue, um, Address them head on. There's no reason to be afraid of them. Not everyone's going to agree with you. Um, they may have talked to organizations that oppose your issue, but address them head on. And if you have reasons to rebut their concern, great. If you don't, make that commitment. Come back and uh, bring follow-up information for them. Know the audience you're meeting with. Um, if it's legislation related to injury prevention, has that legislator sponsored competing or friendly bills before? Um, you'll develop these relationships so you'll know who your advocates in each house are going to be. Uh, is a legislator on a committee of jurisdiction? So if your bill is coming through the Health and Welfare Committee of your state legislature, um, try to prioritize those meetings because you have to get it out of committee before you can get a vote in the broader legislator, um, but don't underestimate the impact of having a meeting with a constituent. So get constituents in front of their representatives, um, but certainly prioritize the committee of jurisdiction. 
Um, does that legislator have a personal vested interest? Um, sometimes the biggest champions of legislation are going to be folks that have been adversely affected by it. So if they've had experience with the trauma system and it's been positive, you know, get to know those folks and, and develop them to be advocates for your cause. Um, and probably most important of all, does the legislation have a specific impact on their constituents? Um, they want to hear about economic, health, uh, anything that's going to affect folks that live in their district. Having data is important um, because when you go to show them that they want, they need concrete evidence that they can take to other other legislators and to the voters and justify their vote. Um, so consider with your issue um, what we call red teaming that. You have independent group of folks familiar with uh, trauma or familiar with your issue field um, come in and just poke holes in it. Every objection they can come up with, uh, every issue, everything they can take issue with, so you can develop opposition positions and you'll have a response ready to go already. Um, and, and don't be afraid of, and, of having these kind of this negative input because it's only going to make it stronger when you hear it from folks you don't expect. Um, sometimes legislation will have been passed in other states already. So research implementation and outcomes in those other states. Um, that'll give you a firm base to stand on when the down the road effects are looked at. You'll want to establish credibility and standing with the legislator. Um, this is where this background research and coalition building is key. You know your issue, uh, you're familiar with the topic, and the legislator can see that, and it makes them feel uh, confident in making the right decision. Uh, coalition building is important, too. Um, if you can get a broad group of folks together on one unified message when you talk to the legislator, that's going to tell them that there's plenty of political cover. They're able to uh, support your bill uh, without worrying about a lot of pushback, uh, either from other organizations or from folks in their district. Share a personal story. Um, sometimes giving a relatable anecdote makes your message more memorable. Um, and when it comes time to vote, if they remember who you are and they remember you favorably, you're more likely to get a yes out of them. Keep the personal story brief and on topic, though. Um, you know, their time is valuable. Your time is valuable. You don't want to go off on a long tangent about uh, a lot of specifics, but keep it to the point and show cause and effect. We're interested in getting medical examiners to report more of their cases back to the trauma centers because it's going to allow us to be, uh, better develop process improvement and uh, study mortality cases. Fairly simple, fairly to the point, and it gets their attention. Providing local data, um, potential economic impacts, especially with things like injury prevention, it's going to be important to show the decreased usage of uh, trauma care from helmet legislation or seatbelt legislation uh, and how that's going to have a positive economic impact on the area. Um, is your legislation going to create jobs? Um, legislators love to talk about creating jobs, especially in their district, um, and it's concrete. It's easy for them to take back to the voters and show um, that they've brought economic well-being to their district. So. Um, any data you can scrape together on jobs is, is going to help support your cause. You need to make sure that in your meeting you include a specific ask. Okay, um, This is where uh, the ABCs of sales come in. Always be closing. Every point you make, check for understanding. Gain agreement. Um, do, you, do you understand this particular issue that I'm talking about? Do you agree with this? And that gives you that gives you time to one 
address objections as they come up, as opposed to all at once at the end, uh, and two, build support throughout the conversation. They're getting, well, I agree with this, this, this. So on the whole, yes, I agree with your bill. I agree with your legislation. And understand you have to specifically ask, can I have your support on this legislation? Okay. Can I have your support on this bill? Will you vote yes for this bill? Um, Senator Mitch McConnell has once said, when asking for someone's vote, a yes was the only thing that meant yes. Everything else was not a vote I could count on. You'll get answers a lot of the time. This is very interesting. I think this is a very important issue. I'll definitely look into this. But unless you get the answer, yes, I will vote for your issue. Um, yes, I will support this bill. Anything else you're going to need to follow up with them on. At the end, summarize what you want. Um, talk about your issue, hit the bullet points, and ask for their support. The one exception is, if they've already said yes, thank them and take your win. Um, there's no reason you need to try and talk yourself out of support. So know when yes means yes and, and take your yes. Once you're done with the meeting, leave behind a packet of materials. Um, if they're still considering the legislation, it's important to go through, hand the packet directly to them, and go through each point, um, flip through the materials, um, bring your business cards. You'll hand a business card to them and encourage them to reach out to you personally regarding the issue. Um, that way, if they do have questions or an opposing organization comes up later, uh, you're their point of contact. Follow up with the legislators. Um, regardless of the outcome, yes, no, maybe, send them a thank you card, send them a thank you note. Handwritten is best. Um, email is acceptable. If you can, call them. Leave them a message on the phone. Um, have your grassroots contacts follow up. Um, what I've found to be uh, very useful is to, after a meeting, identify all of the members and all of the folks you can in that uh, member's district and have them contact them. Send them an email. Call their office. Um, contact them on Twitter, Facebook. Um, lots of them are very technically savvy and, and will respond to that. Another thing to consider, um, especially for longer processes in passing a bill, is Schedule visits with your legislator to your hospital. Um, they'll have, they'll see the impact uh, of your care and of your profession firsthand, and that can often lead to building advocates for your cause um, at the state level. Um, that's at this time. We'll move on to our question and answer session. Um, so our first question, um, what resources is STN developing going forward? Um, so for one, this webinar, uh, but our government affairs and advocacy resources are going to be added to the STN website. Um, we're also expanding our government affairs and public policy committee. Uh, so keep an eye out. We'll be sending um, e-blasts uh, with an application for anyone interested in joining the committee. Um, another question is, what can I do to get involved politically? Um, I can tell you someone does this full-time, you may be getting more than what you ask for, but meet with your legislators. Um, that's the first thing. They will meet with you in district. They will love to come tour your hospital. Um, it gets them out of the office. It gets them away from the Capitol. Um, get in, if you're really involved, get involved on campaigns. Um, that's how I started. That's how most everyone I know started. They went out and they started knocking doors or making phone calls or stuffing envelopes. Um, they, they love to have support on their campaigns. And if you're feeling especially bored, bold, you could even run for office. I um, have another question. Should we invite our legislator to come to her? How do you do this? Um, if you're in a meeting with a legislator, um, it, it's as simple as, as that. Um, Talk to them and say, 
you know, I would love for you to come see our uh, our practice, our hospital. When would you be available? Uh, they may not know right away, but they've got a scheduler uh, in their office, and that scheduler will look and get something uh, set up for you. Uh, let's see. Sorry, we're pulling up more questions. Can we invite them out of the blue, or does it need to be in conjunction with an ask? Uh, that's actually a really good point. As I said earlier in the uh, presentation, you, you don't want the first time you ask a legislator for something to be the first time you meet them. So certainly start building those connections now. Um, invite them to your center. You can, if you're a part of a large trauma center, set up a day to invite all the legislators that you can in and have them tour your practice and have them tour your hospital. Um, here's, a, here's a good one. At what point does one give up and move on? Um, a legislator or staff does not return phone calls as promised. They don't say yes, and they don't, uh, they don't seem to say no. Um, you know, that in, in that case, it may be beneficial to focus your efforts elsewhere. It depends on the legislator you're talking to. Um, if it's a rank-and-file member, uh, they're not on your committee. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it through the the House or the Senate earlier may be better. Um, if they're in party leadership, uh, the House or the Senate majority leaders, um, it, it's going to be important to stay on them because those folks hold a lot of power depending on your legislator and what uh, issues get heard. Um, if they're on the committee, you, you got to stay on them. Um, but Part of that's going to come from developing relationships. If they know you and they're comfortable with you, they can tell you, I can't support this legislation. Um, who from the hospital should be included in a visit? CEO, different units. Um, if it's a general visit, uh, then anyone that is, uh, that is involved in your issue should be there. Um, if it's specific to trauma, you, you may want to narrow the visit down. And part of that's just going to come from scheduling and the time that the legislators have. Um, so as far as what parts of the hospital, it, it really does just come down to each issue and the legislator schedule um, and the availability of staff as well. Uh, Let's see, we have another question. TCAA has been trying to get funding for trauma centers and systems for years, but this does not seem to be going anywhere. Should we give up or change our tactics? Well, I would say for certain you don't want to give up entirely. You you can give up with one legislator specifically, um, but the issue as a whole is it's still going to be important to pursue. It, it may be time to change tactics. It, it may be time um, to explore different options as far as your grassroots support or institutional support. And again, building these coalitions, it may be that the, the voice just isn't, isn't loud enough from one group. You may need all of the groups on board. Um, let's see. Uh, we have one a comment um, regarding giving up uh, that these folks are like everyone else. They don't think about nursing until they need one. Uh, and they desperately uh, do. They need them to be excellent, ethical, and hardworking, ready, willing, and want to be, become more able. Uh, yeah, exactly. They they don't think about this as, as most folks do. They don't think about it on a regular basis, and that's where building these relationships, getting to know your individual legislator, doing these practice visits is really going to help. Um, can I speak more to what it means to get grassroots support? Um, yeah, exactly. Grassroots support, it's individual nurses. It's individual uh, members of your trauma team at the hospital, doctors, physician's assistants, um, nursing assistants. Everyone in the hospital that works as that team, you need all of them to be engaged, and, and that means every single one of them. So if it comes down to just identifying who their legislator is and getting them to commit to sending one email, um, getting them to make one phone call, um, 
that's the kind of support that's going to really make a difference in the legislator's office. Um, and this is where you'll identify your real champions, your real grassroots um, supporters that will get out and will take meetings, uh, and you'll never know what connections they may have. You, you may have a physician's assist assistant in your trauma center who's the son or daughter of a state senator and has their ear. Um, so getting and talk, getting out and talking to those folks early on is going to be key in building support and, and providing legislators with that political cover they need to, to make the right decision. Uh, what trauma issues are currently under discussion on the Hill? Um, funding has always been important, um, of course, um, and then injury prevention. Um, but the issues that are most important are going to be the issues that you as an organization get out there and spearhead. Um, these don't just become think become a bill organically. You know, there's folks, there's organizations that will get behind the legislation and really push it early on. So I would say what issues are currently under discussion or what are what's important? It's what issues are important to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Haley. It appears we are out of questions. If you have further questions, please send them to info at traumanurses.org, and we will send them to Mr. Haley, and he will answer them and send them back to the, all the attendees. As a reminder, you receive your CH certificate within 7 to 14 days of today, and the recording will be on the STN website by the end of next week. Thank you very much, and have a great rest of your day.